Tau overflows. Understand the child, he will respond as well. Understanding the child is the essence of the process of child rearing and nurturing the seed within the child. When you understand the child, the child understands you as well. Remember something, children are utterly responsive when the child sees that he is never prevented. Then once you say, I am doing something, please, the child will know that it is not from a parent who is constantly looking to shout at him. It is from a parent who allows everything and respects me. Indeed, this is the way you rear a child into the ultimate flowering. And when an awakened one rears the child, the result is much different. Certainly children have their vision, understanding and their ways. Try to understand them. An understanding mind will always find a deep harmony between him and the child. I repeat it again. An understanding mind will always find a deep harmony arises, arising between him and the child. With this also comes deep mutual respect for one another. With this also comes deep mutual respect for one another. Then the growth and transformation is phenomenal. Then growth and transformation is phenomenal. This is how master works with the seeker. This is how the master works with each seeker. It is only the stupid, the unconscious and the non-understanding people who go on remaining closed in their ideas and never look at the vision of others. Children bring freshness into the world. Each child is a new addition of consciousness. Children are fresh entry of divinity into life. Be respectful and understanding to them and their ideas. If you are happy and alert, there is no need at all to be worried about how not to commit same mistakes because out of awareness you will not commit any mistakes but then you have to be totally different from your parents consciousness will bring that difference you have been bestowed with this quality of consciousness in the seed form the moment you start thinking how to help children to grow without any competitive spirit, you are already on the wrong track. The moment you start thinking how to help children to grow without any competitive spirit, you are already on a wrong track. Because whatever you are going to do, is going to give the child a certain program. It may be different from the one that you have received, but you are conditioning the child with all the best intentions in the world. I recall some times ago at a place someone told me now you have a competition, you have a competitor in your business. I said, I do not have any competitor for me. 
What do you mean by that? Is he not selling the same products? I said, yes, maybe. But there is a difference between his and my understanding. I have no competitor. My only competition is with me. How I handled the people today and am I going to make an improvement over that to ascertain how I am dealing with them tomorrow whatsoever mistakes I made today I do not want to commit again so that my tomorrow is an improvement on today this did not sink into him because of his conditioning. The trees go on growing without any, anybody teaching them how to grow. The animals, the birds and the entire existence needs no programming. The very idea of programming is basically creating slavery and man has been creating slaves for thousands of years in different names. When people become fed up with one name, another name immediately replaces it. A few modified programs, a few changes here and there. In the conditioning, but the fundamental thing remains the same. The fundamental understanding remains the same with the parents. The older generation want their children to be in a certain way. This is why this title, How to Rear a Child, comes in. And because of this, there remains a generation gap between the older generation that are exiting the world and the newer generation that is newer model of consciousness that is now at the threshold. It is like one thing is disappearing and another is coming into offing. When human consciousness attains to inner harmony and this harmony merges with cosmic oneness, the pulse of cosmos, it is never disturbed by any kind of outer disturbances such as the state of meditativeness. When human consciousness attains to inner harmony and inner harmony merges with cosmic oneness, the pulse of cosmos, it is never disturbed by any kind of outer disturbance, such is the state of meditativeness. This state happens the moment inner is transformed or it has outgrown the narrow boundaries and with that outer life naturally transforms. By inner transformation, I mean inner lamp of awakening is lit now. You are a light unto yourself. Your way of looking at life, both inner and outer, also changes. Certainly, without inner awakening, you are living in deep ignorance deep ignorance generated darkness the darkness that is generated by the ignorance because of this world of conflict and duality exists for you the moment inner lamp is lit all of a sudden the world dissolves disappears for you and you have found a tranquil shore amidst the storms of life and then what remains is godliness, tranquility, harmony, the state of meditativeness, uh, oh harmony and serenity 
everything depends on your awakening or a state of consciousness everything depends on your awakening or a state of consciousness this alone is transformation the ultimate of this is buddhahood or enlightenment this leads to a multi-dimensional consciousness one can perform many diverse functions simultaneously this is how a child is to be reared nourished and nurtured this is how a child is to be reared nourished and nurtured each moment along his life encourage him to and ask you the questions respond the questions out of your awareness not out of your accumulated knowledge respond to their questions out of your awakening not out of accumulated knowledge enough for now